the past is history the future is a mystery there's mm-hmm. no time the present is a gift that's why it's wait hold on. uh right now is a gift that's why it's called the present thank you good night nailed it um wow keith could i just stop for a second and just point out could i have done that any better like wow Hey, remember when Andy was... Uh, why Why am I even bringing up Andy not making it to a thing? Like, it's in any way surprising or notable at all. Like, why Why is that a thing I'm even doing? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. It, to be fair, you said that you might be unavailable until 10 o'clock, and it's 10 o'clock right now. Um, but that doesn't matter, because I have a podcast to host. Um... I mean, nobody heard it before. We already settled this, that I'm still the host. I think that we didn't settle it, and what we came out with was that, no, I am the host. My name is Keith Carberry, host of the Run Button Podcast. Today is Kyle Churchill, guest. Hi, I'm Kyle Churchill, host of this, the Run Button Podcast, and I'm thrilled to have my special guest, Keith Carberry, here with me. Special host, Keith Carberry, here to host the Run Button Podcast with... My special guest, Kyle Churchill, host co-host of, of the, Run the Run Button, Button Podcast. Podcast. Um, do you do you want do you want to get into Bloodborne, or do you want me to talk about stuff so that you have an opportunity to not be the one talking and also be recording? God, Keith, I just I feel like I need to talk away the pain. Okay, go for it. Uh, see, this is actually ironic because the thing I was about to talk about before I realized that I wasn't recording was that, um, recently I'd been streaming Bloodborne on my PS4 with the built-in streaming function, and we talked about how they recently added the feature where people that are in your PS4 PSN party chat party, their voices can be on the stream also, so you can have, like, a party stream. Uh, so, Bloodborne came out... And I had already had it preloaded, so it was like, I think 20 minutes after midnight when it was available, I did a stream, like, as soon as you possibly could, almost. And Mm -hmm. uh, I had two people, granted, it was really just like, it was like two Run Button fans that happened to be online. So I was just like, you're like literally the only two people that can be on this stream, come be on this stream. Okay. Uh, But apparently the thing is, you have to go into your party chat settings and enable your voice to be broadcast on other streams before it will appear. So I streamed Bloodborne for like an hour before anyone in the chat went like, oh, Kyle, are you supposed to be talking to someone? Because we only <laughs> hear you. We, we just thought you, we were, you were doing that thing where you're normally just a maniac. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you actually think about it, normally when you're doing a stream by yourself, you are just kind of talking to yourself as if you're a person. Or yeah. like the, well, here's the thing that doesn't and happen the, on streams by yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, A, they weren't talking that much, and B, like, I guess people just thought that I was, like, reacting to things people were saying in the in the chat, even oh, though okay. if you looked at the chat, you could see that that wasn't the case because there was, like, nobody, but mm. I don't know. I was just like, man, guys, I really feel, hey, chat, I really feel like you dropped the ball on this one, for sure. Chat drops the ball. That's, like, kind of what they're there for. They're there for two things. One, for taking jokes from, sometimes, but mostly for dropping that ball. They're constantly dropping that ball. Yeah. Uh, how? Talk to me about Bloodborne for the first time ever. Uh, yeah, Bloodborne is it's a great game. It's If anyone doesn't know, I always hear people say this. I go... They what's go, Bloodborne? They go, what's Bloodborne? I don't Who, know anything about Bloodborne. Blood, where tell am me, I? Tell me about Bloodborne. What is what is what is a Bloodborne? And what I, is a Bloodborne? I Kyle? say I say Bloodborne is Dark Souls three, and then they go, oh okay, okay. Because that's that's just really all but it here's, is. Here's the thing. I feel like there's going to be a Dark Souls three, and it's not going to be Bloodborne. That might happen. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, uh, it's like guns. Dark Souls two point five. Well. I, there's also a bit of that thing where, like, some of the original 
creators of Dark Souls went on to Bloodborne and they weren't involved in Dark Souls 2. So there was kind of a little bit of that like, it's like the real Dark Souls 2, man. Like uh, like Bioshock and oh, Infinite. Oh, yeah, that's obnoxious. Yeah. I actually, uh, I actually haven't in- encountered as much of that as I thought I would. Yeah, that sounds uh, like like a piece of uh, like a piece of why people didn't like uh, Silent Hill Four. Right. Yeah. Like it's not the it's not the real crew. Well, I think people said that like when Silent Hill Four came out, it was like it was not the real crew, and then like the next Silent Hill came out, and I feel like Silent Hill Four looked like a real Silent Hill game by yeah. comparison. <laughs> Um, yeah, no one, people have not liked the Silent Hill game earnestly for uh, quite a bit. Uh. Mm -mm. Um, oh, speaking of Silent Hill, though, did you hear this thing about Kojima's uh, leaving, uh, 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 the place? Yeah, was wait, I thought we were talking about Bloodborne. We were. Uh, You kind of said a lot about Blood, enough about Bloodborne, I felt. Oh, (laughs) Oh, literally, you just embodied that person that, like, all they needed to know was that Bloodborne was Dark Souls 3, because that's all I said. (laughs) Well, what it felt like, it felt like you didn't have a ton to say about it because it was just Dark Souls 3. You know what, yeah, that's, that's most of it. I mean, it's... Do you, you, and you like it, because you like Dark Souls. Yeah, I like it, because I like Dark Souls. But you don't like it more. I don't like it more than the original. I might like it more than Dark Souls 2. I'd have to have to play with it a little bit more. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Dark Souls 2 I um, wasn't in love with, but uh I love I just really love the uh the Victorian theme of this one. It it looks really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's a lot of people wearing like trench coats and shit. Yeah, dude. fucking who doesn't love a trench coat and like a grimy looking asshole? Dude, my uh my grimy looking asshole. My character's wearing a tricorn hat. Like you can't get any more dope than that. Ooh, do you have a corn cob pipe? <sighs> if only keys, I only like only. clothes that are three matching syllables. Tricorn hat. Um There's uh there's no shield, so you have to dodge a lot more. You have a gun, but it's kind of like a an ineffectual gun. It's only Is for it? stunning. It's not for oh, like that's shooting weird. people. I didn't know it's that like, at all. It's like uh, in Dark Souls, you had a shield, and then you could parry people with the shield to like stun them, and then you would do like a critical hit when they were stunned. And like now, the gun serves the same parry purpose, but you can't block with it, obviously. So it's like you can still stun them to do the critical hit, but you can't just hold up the shield to like block damage. I can't believe that the sh- the gun doesn't do any real damage, and then I didn't know that. It does a tiny bit of damage, but I don't right. know. I don't know if you can like spec gun or anything. I don't think yeah, so. Oh, maybe you need to spec gun. I don't think you can spec gun. I would spec gun. Um. Oh, so yeah. So we were talking. About, we were talking about Silent Hill. We were talking about Kojima, who was uh, only recently uh, famously being attached to the silent, the new Silent Hill game. Oh yeah, and is now not because he's gone. Right, or he's. It is. All but confirmed that he will leave Konami after the completion of Metal Gear Solid V. Granted, I mean, he's never said that he's leaving Konami, but like every every time he makes a Metal Gear Solid game, he says he has been saying that it was going to be his last Metal Gear Solid game since two or one. So you're saying that he's done? He's done, so? No, I'm saying that he has a long and storied history of saying I'm that saying he was done, done with shit after he was done with the thing he was doing, and then not being done with it. That's true, but they like took logos off stuff. What did they do? They took lo- his logo off things. That's weird. Yeah, like they took um they they left the Fox Engine logo but took uh Kojima's logo off of like uh Silent Hills. But it's the same logo. It's two different ones though. It's the same. Like, I think they were next to each other and they were similar and they were This is just something that I saw on Twitter. Yeah, yeah it just it sounds like a Konami has been being a bunch of jerks to Kojima, which... Um, like, pushing him down? It seems weird to me, because, like, I can kind of understand how artists could probably be pretty difficult to work with, and mm-hmm. I can see how a uh, big, like, a corporation with corporate interests would be really annoyed by that, a la, like, Activision and the Infinity Ward guys before they left, or, you know, yeah. before they were fired. Uh But, like, Konami literally has nothing besides Kojima. That's that's all they have. They have Metal Gear Solid. And before, they didn't even have Silent Hill because that was dead. And then, like, Kojima was helped bringing it back. 
Like, they killed yeah. Silent Hill. I mean, uh, Castlevania. Like, that's gone, basically. Like, all they have left is Kojima and Metal Gear. So, like, why would you... I don't know. Why would you mess that up? I don't know. I don't know, Kyle. Why are you asking me? I don't know. I'm still really excited about Metal Gear Solid Five. Looks super good. I don't know anything about Metal Gear Solid Five. I haven't really played any of the Metal Gears except for when you famously took back oh your copy my of God. fucking Twin Snakes from me. Uh, Keith, in under you, my nose, like a Keith, fucking like a fucking games weasel. You had it for like a year and you didn't. You never played ah, it. Time is weird when you're a kid. You weren't a kid. You were like twelve. I mean, that's a kid. Well, okay, like, yeah, you're right. I wasn't a kid. I was twelve. <laughs> I'm just saying you weren't like a baby. Um, I, I wasn't taking a, a, a metaphorical candy from a baby. From a literal baby. No, what I'm saying... Apparently, I'm, I was taking saying, a metaphorical candy from a metaphorical baby, you what fucking I'm saying baby. Is that, what I'm saying, when I say time is weird, I'm not saying I, I lost track of time and didn't play it. I think I'm saying it was a lot less than a year, and you just remember it being forever, because you were 14 or whatever. No, nah, I don't think so. I bet it was a few months. Sure. And I played it was, a bunch of it. It was a few like, months. I played up until uh, like, like uh, some weirdo in an elevator. Some weirdo in an elevator. I don't know. You got to unplug a controller or something? I don't know. You got to that part? I Yeah, something like that. That's, yeah, that's like halfway through that very short game. Yeah, sure. There you go. Um, I probably got a little bit past that. That's just the last thing that I remember. You know what? I probably fucking did you a favor because in, in years since, I've learned that that remake of Metal Gear Solid 1 is the inferior version. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You talked about this before. Yeah. Um, I've got some news stories. You want to hear about some news? Oh, I have some things that I've been playing. Um, Would you like to hear about them? Nah, I'm not interested. Okay. Um, I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing. What's it called by uh, that company? Keith, could I step in? Yeah, for a for second. It. I think if you're going to be leading this kind of podcast thing, if you're going to be the host guy, or mm-hmm. I mean, if if I'm at least letting you pretend to host this podcast, yeah. what's up? Yeah, I think you got to work on those segues, dog. All right, here's a new It's segue. like we're talking about one thing, and then suddenly you're just like, all right, we got news. And I'm like, whoa, buddy. Well, like, you, there was a lull. That there was, was a lull in the conversation. You were done talking. Keith, I had nothing else that, to say about Metal that Gear. That transition had the subtlety of a car crash. You got to work we on that shit. Transi- we don't need subtle transitions. Are you we got need fucking rapid cuts, rapid cuts. We're Keith, the fucking Michael Bays of podcasting. Keith, the Michael's have, Bay of podcasting. Keith, I have an undiagnosed transition disorder... And you need to not spring new things on me so quickly without what? warning. It's undiagnosed? Yeah. I don't know if this is legitimate. I'm not going to let you I took, sit around no, fucking Keith, I took an online web test. MD, you fucking WebMD asshole sitting around getting your symptoms all confused on a, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a web surface. Keith, I, I don't like it. Keith, online tests are proven accurate. By who? Other online tests? Me. I thought that I had a transition disorder. I took the test. It said I did. Confirmed. Confirmation bias, Kyle. That doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, if I thought... Keith, let me teach you about the scientific method. If you think something, you have a theory, you think, oh, I think this, and then you test it and it's true, then it's true. And then it gets to the spread the word part of the the method. But you didn't <laughs> you didn't test it. You just did a, You took a multiple choice. Yeah, I tested. Or you pointed on a. I you literally pointed on a took body. a test, Keith. No, 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 no. That's not. That's the, it's a different kind of test. The real test is what? me doing a bunch of. Here's how you test for that sort of thing. I do a bunch of transitions, and then you see how you feel. Yeah, it's driving me fucking anyway, crazy. Anyway, here's what I've been playing. I've been playing Pillars of Eternity, the Obsidian uh. game. How do you feel? I don't actually suspect that I have a transition disorder. Okay. I don't actually. I don't think. think I think. You, I don't think anyone does because you made that up. No, it's a real thing. Uh, we think Lucas has a transition disorder. What's a transition disorder? It's like, uh, it's like if, if he's at a party and he's like really amped up because there's like all these people and everything's loud and everyone's being crazy and having a good time, and then it's like he'll like go home and he can't like turn off. He can't turn the dial down. He's just like a lunatic for the rest of the day. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I thought that you made up a transition disorder, and it was a movie where you couldn't watch a. You, it was a disorder where you couldn't watch a movie with too many transitions. <laughs> just like, fine, good luck watching Birdman over and over. That's I can't watch. I can't watch uh, movies with lame transitions. Like I go back and watch the special editions of Star Wars, and I'm like, stop mm. it with all these wipes! Ah, I can't keep wiping wipe? everything. What are you doing? Why did you think that was okay? Why did you wipe things? Just cut. Like just cut. That's Stop how you know wiping. George Lucas is a maniac. That like he watched, <laughs> he watched like his own movie, and like it was in one place, and then the movie went to another place, <laughs> and he's like, "This is too sudden for me. We need to fix this." <laughs> it's just like so jarring. Here's something that I didn't know. I didn't know that those wipes worked in the special edition. I mean, they were they're only in them. I think. No, I didn't know that they weren't in the special edition. No, they are. Sorry. Wait. I didn't know that they were in. I didn't know that they weren't in the original versions of the movie. I, you know, I now that I think about it, I can't 100% confirm that they're not, but I'm almost positive they're not. Yeah, they're really goofy, aren't they? They, yeah, like I they're think they're really fucking think goofy. George, like that's something that I noticed when I was a kid. I think George like, Lucas might have a transition disorder. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been playing Pillars of Eternity. Yeah, which is, uh, yeah. Did you see me discovering what Pillars of Eternity was on the internet on Twitter? No, no. Let me t- give me give me a little taste. I think, I think, I think it was Han tweeted like, "Oh, it, it Pillars of Eternity is out. Hey, happy Pillars of Eternity Day, everybody!" And then I was like, "The hell is that?" And he's like, "What?" And I was like. I saw you tweeting about Final Fantasy fourteen earlier. Is this some fucking Final Fantasy fourteen bullshit? And he's just like, What the fuck? And then someone else joined in, like they were just totally taken aback back that I had not the fucks. I had the gall to not know what the fuck Pillars of Eternity was. Uh inform me, even though I I'm, know. Okay, but so pretend that are, I still so, okay, don't know. So no know. one answered your question? Pretend that I still don't know and inform me. Uh, Pillars of Eternity it was the kickstarted was the it's over now it's gone. Uh, Pillars of Eternity is over. I can't still kickstart it. Uh, it was kickstarted. But Keith, I need to crowdfund. I need it's, to fund with a crowd of people. I listen. You've got to go. T- you've got to go talk to this, the Star Citizen people and figure it out. You're the only ones that know how to do it. Apparently. Um, yeah. So uh, Obsidian was like, "Can we make a? Can we please make a like a, a throwback Infinity Engine game?" Uh, and the internet was like, yeah, you can do that. And they called it Pillars of Eternity. And I put money into it. And I've been waiting for it for like two and a half years. Uh, it's uh, it's basically like a throwback, isometric angle uh, yeah. RPG. Um, um, for, for, for people that aren't super nerds that don't know what it means when you say an Infinity Engine game... It's like uh, it, like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale and shit. And if you're, sw- you're still not enough of a nerd to know those things, just go Google it. Just go Google it, yeah. Uh, some of my favorite games were those games. <laughs> or if you're still not enough of a nerd to know what Baldur's Gate is, don't even bother thinking about Pillars of Eternity because you probably don't want to play it. Well, hold on. You might not be enough of a nerd to have played it before, but maybe you're enough of a nerd to enjoy it now. Oh. Yeah, there's a middle ground. I don't think uh, I it's am, pretty good. Though. I actually I haven't gotten super far in it because I there's a it's an Obsidian game and there's a game breaking bug. Oh my uh, god, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it's like a super weird bug too. Do you want to hear about it? I'm getting to the. I think Obsidian does it on purpose at this point. Like you I know think what? it's like it's, their fucking thing. There's I've never ever ever had a serious issue with an Obsidian game and a bug before. Like yeah, there's some weird buggy shit in Obsidian games, but I've never had an issue where the entire game was at risk because of a thing, uh, even temporarily. Uh, but this bug seems like very easy to uh, do, which is if you double click on a, an item in your inventory instead of dragging it onto the inventory slot, then all of your passive uh, buffs are gone forever. Wait, say it again. You, it's just if you double click on a piece of armor or a ring or a cloak in your inventory instead of to equip it, instead of dragging it and dropping it onto the equip slot, then all of your passive bonuses are just gone forever. What? Isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> How do you not notice that? It's like I the don't. first thing you would do. I hate clicking like and dragging thing. I don't things. double I don't ever double click on the or I, I don't usually double click on things. I hate dragging I usually things. drag and dropping. I hate what? dragging and dropping things. I almost always drag and drop it. 
Um, but the reason that I stopped playing was because I didn't want to accidentally double click, and I wasn't sure if I had double clicked anyway. So I was like, you know what? Probably should just wait for the patch. Here's the thing about that game: it's fucking super fun, though. Uh, it's super fun. It was written by one of my favorite games writers, Chris Avalone, who wrote Kotor 2. Oh, uh, okay. Here we fucking and a bunch go. Of other games. First, well, we, here I thought Keith was talking about some other game, but actually he's still just talking about Kotor two. I lit- I true. don't. I literally think that Keith has been talking about Kotor two for six years. It's really good. That game came out more than six years ago. I know. It's just years. it's been at least six years since you've been talking about it. That's true. Uh, no, I mean Chris Avalon's written other stuff. You like Fallout New Vegas? Fuck yeah, I do. Yeah, he wrote that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about Fallout New Vegas because it was an Obsidian game with a bunch of bugs in it. Yeah, let's go Let's go back and I'll restart the sentence. I. It's uh, written by Chris Avalon, one of my favorite games writers. He wrote Fallout New Vegas. Oh, that dude rocks. Yeah, that dude does rock. I um, still think about Fallout New Vegas like all the time. Yeah, me too. Like literally really just today I was thinking about um, the, the group... Of people that have a leader that they call Kaisar, and they all say "Glory unto Kaisar," and then they crucify people in towns. But I think it was like a not cross-shaped crucifix, as to not make Christian people angry. Right. Um, Glory. Oh unto yeah, Kaisar. I think I remember that. Keith, I have to type something. How What's up? fucking insane is it that the? Ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth months in our calendar are named after the numbers seven, eight, nine, and ten, but they're not seven, eight, nine, and ten because two guys just decided that they get their own months. That is crazy. And you know what? That's they weird. Pit, they they took the two best months. Which two? Which two are you saying are the best months? July and August. Yeah. Like they picked summertime. I would say that June and July are the two best months. Yeah, but they're on a different place. They were in a different part of the world, though. That's true. You're right. You're right. You're not wrong. I thought about it. Yeah. Uh, so Pillars of Eternity is really good. Uh, I'm rolling around as a uh, uh, as a fucking druid. I'm a tree man. Keith, I'm what tree news man stories you a- got? Hold on. I'm a tree man named a... Uh, uh, Oh shit! What am I called? Like a god something? Like a fucking god man? <laughs> like tree. There's a there's a fucking race of people called like god men or whatever, and uh, people are afraid of them because they're human. Or they're they're just the regular races that were born, and if they for whatever reason just look kind of like the gods. Um, and I could turn into a giant cat. It's rad. It's a great. It's a great game. It's really fun. Uh, news stories. You want news stories? Keith, did yeah. you know that orangutan means the forest people? I did know that, yeah. Orangutan, for those who don't know, is uh, Kyle being an asshole for orangutan, mm-hmm. uh, which are those orange monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I do um, I do love the idea of, of just, like, you see, like, seeing, like, a, a, a primate of some description, like a low, mm-hmm. a lesser primate, but, like, you're, it's, like, so long ago... That your civilization is so unadvanced that it's like they're basically the same as you, but like you live in a cave and they live in trees. Right. You're just like, wow, oh, it's like they're basically the, my those brothers. Are, like those are they called we called them the forest people, they called us the village people. Like, <laughs> like no, but seriously those like the defining thing about orangutans is that they just live in the forest. Like yeah. that's the only difference. <laughs> I Kyle, I do want to say that you call them a lesser primate. I would, I, I maybe some great ape fans out there would take umbrage with that. Okay, because they, great is in the name. You know what? You're. If you right. want to talk about lesser primates? Maybe like a maybe like a like a lemur. Is a lemur they're a primate? At, they're at le- what do you mean? Yeah, of course it is. Is it? Yes. I'm now thinking that maybe it's not. What would it be? I don't know, like a fucking ground squirrel. A ground squirrel. <laughs> it's a ground squirrel, like well, a, like a prairie dog. Keith, is a ground squirrel. Well, I would no, ask. Okay, no, I would it ask is a, that you it is just a consult your Blu-ray archive of Subumafu. <laughs> Listen, the Crab Brothers know how to tell me what the animals are. Um. All right, I got some news stories for you, Kyle. Online streaming service shutting down. Family members more relieved than grieving. Quote: Frankly, we'd be greedy to have asked for more time. <laughs> No more on live. On live's gone. Oh, on live. On live. Okay. Sure. Uh, 
It's, uh, do you remember on live? Yeah, sure, I remember on live. It was like almost a big deal. It was, yeah, it was almost a big deal. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, they're selling their assets to Sony. We're at the point now where it almost, uh, like, on live almost bears explanation because I feel like there might be people listening that are like just weren't tuned into games when yeah. on live happened. Um, on live, on live was a st- was a <sighs> video game God. streaming service. <sighs> oh, did you want to take yeah, the reins here, Keith? I got it. On live was like PlayStation Now. It was like a streaming service where the game ran. You were playing a game, but instead of running on your computer, it was running on on live servers, which. Um, theoretically would be a lot more powerful than your computer so that you could play it on like maximum settings and then it was streaming to your computer so fast that it you were playing it over the internet but it felt like you were playing it on your PC a little bit mm-hmm. um, but the problem was that you had to pay a subscription fee and then pay full price for the games right. which was a little nutso yeah uh, the, 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 the two main problems with the online service as far as I know uh, which I do have some experience with because uh, uh, my cousin Ted had it for a little while because he just fucking like ah, I have to try out he's a tech thing. Your cousin Ted, because he's my cousin and Ted, and that's yeah. what so, he does. Yeah. So the two main problems that I could see are, or uh, aside from the pricing, I guess no, I guess the pricing would be included in why this is a problem. But it was like super sophisticated technology that they basically like made from the ground up. Mm-hmm. That you know, I feel like. Because we have services like that now, yeah. like well, PlayStation I, Now. I think you could see it coming from a mile away that they were they were going to be the first through the door, and like yeah. that person yeah, always exactly. gets bloodied. Like yeah, that they yeah they went out of business because they wanted to be the first person to do it like, instead of waiting for someone else to do it. Yeah, um, ba- basically, like they on live was ahead of its time. Yeah, and and just the infrastructure infrastructure didn't really exist. I think to make it. And and also on live was its own company. Like Sony has the capital, I feel like, to really put, like, y- you know, like, they can really like try to edge pricing out in like PlayStation Now, even though that's still a little bit expensive. But yeah. they at least have some wiggle room. Whereas like on life was like, well, they're not going to make money; they're going to shut down. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess the second problem would be just like a little bit of lag. Yeah, like a little, like, like a little bit of lag. The two things I remember playing on it were. Borderlands and because mm-hmm. there was like a free trial, so I played Borderlands. I played uh, World of Goo, which is insane because World of Goo is a game that can run on anything, so you would never need to play it on on live. But right. uh, my experience was that Borderlands was like completely fine, except for the fact that every once in a while it would hitch up a little bit. Um, or there, you know, there would be artifacting because it was compressed video. Like, I remember it just feeling really weird that, like, when you're playing a game, it's like you have a built-in instinct of, like, when a game is lagging. It's like when a lot of Mm. stuff is happening on the screen or there's an explosion or, you know, a lot of physics, but it would be happening at completely random times that sudden, like, it it was, like, messing with my head. I was like, this isn't when games are supposed to hitch up. I'm so confused. My Mm. game instincts. But it was... I don't know. I don't... I feel like a newborn. (laughs) Yeah, no, but Borderlands, playing Borderlands was, like, totally fine, but um, World of Goo is a mouse-based game, and, like, trying to do it with a mouse, like, the lag was so obvious. It, oh, really? It was, it was, like, unplayable. It's weird that World of Goo was the one that broke online. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, um, I think, I remember the thing that I was really impressed by about OnLive was that not only were they the first one to do the whole game streaming thing, they were the first ones to do you watching another person play a game really because you would like go into on live and it would just show you like a wall of games running and you could just literally be like i want to watch a person play splinter cell and you just clicked a button Mm -hmm. and you were just watching them it was like instant it was like crazy yeah it was cool that was a cool thing there was no there was no way to like communicate back and forth no Um, well it wasn't a show no i think you could what was it? It was like you could cheer or jeer, I think was what they called it. And, so, you know, sure. it was like you could give them a thumbs up while they were playing. And I think they would see like, hey, someone gave you a thumbs up. Someone thought you did a good job. Man, on live was so ahead of its time that I didn't even realize that they like did Twitch before Twitch. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad on live. Yeah. R- on rip live? in peace. Rip in peace on live. Um, 
Weird that it was even still around, though. Yeah. There was, there was like, massive layoffs, like, five years ago, and I guess I just assumed, until I saw this news story, like, I just assumed, like, oh, they must have just, they must have just fizzled away into nothing. Um, but nope, now they're being rolled up into Sony's garbage. Uh, okay. I say garbage, of course, not as a quality, a qualitative statement, but, uh... Just their stuff. Their stuff. Yeah. Um, now, PlayStation now is, uh, man, it's, like, so close yeah. to being a thing, like... So you mean it's a lot like online? <laughs> it's, yeah, really. Uh, the thing is, like, PlayStation Now now has become a subscription service, mm-hmm. or I think it's supposed to be both. I think there's supposed to be you can just play it a la carte, or there's a subscription service where you pay, like, a monthly fee, and then you get access to a selection of the catalog, which is actually, yeah. like, a lot of games. I couldn't find the first thing anymore. I could only find... I think they were just trying to funnel me into the subscription. Mm-hmm. And it's like 20 bucks a month. That's a lot of it's money. It's like just... it's. They have a lot of games, and a lot of them are good. But it's like... There's just not enough games. And it's it's really weird, because I feel like they advertised it as like... With PlayStation Now, it's not going to matter what the platform was, because you're going to be able to play anything anywhere. But really, it's like PS3 games. And it's like right. not... It's too soon. Like So the only mm-hmm. things I'm going to be playing is stuff that I missed from the last generation, and like I didn't miss much. Like I got that fucking generation covered, you know? Like Yeah, yeah. If I saw like PS1 games and PS2 games, it'd be like... Oh yeah, I'll play that awesome PS2 game for a couple bucks or something. But right, I, I'm not gonna play like I don't know. But you're also Dynasty not looking Warrior for like 7. PS1 classics for twenty bucks a month. No, but that's not a good deal I'll, for PS1 classics. I'll say this: though. I'll play the shit out of some PS1 classics. That's yeah, sure. I, but for I think bucks a month. I think that's my. I don't know about twenty bucks a month. But I'm raising my eyebrows at you for twenty bucks a month. I, uh-huh. It would get me closer if there were a bunch of PS1 games on that service. I would at least be thinking about it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you get to Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon. It's a Spyro game. That's a Enter the Dragonfly. I, oh right, you're yeah. right. I, and, I and also so that was a yet. that was a GameCube game, a PS2 what? GameCube game. Was it? Yeah. You're thinking Wait, which, of which Year one of the Dragon. Of? Year of the Dragon? Yeah. Eh, those, those are the same title, Kyle. Year of the Dragon and Enter the Dragonfly are the same title. And of course, no, I, I wouldn't want to play either of those because obviously uh, Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 1, is the best Spyro, gra- Spyro game. Hashtag unpopular opinions. I like, uh, I think I like the third one, but I think that's pretty universally thought to be the worst one. Yeah, at least the so. worst one on the PlayStation One. Yeah, I think everyone's um, all about that Spyro Two. But wake the fuck up, people! Spyro One is way better than Spyro Two. I the one that I like is the one that has Mister Moneybags and a Whirly Gig. I don't know which one that was. I think it's the third. I think it's two and three. Uh, Kyle, hashtag Smash wake Brothers up, character hashtag balance. Sheeple, hashtag open your eyes. Smash Brothers character ballots. You hear about this? No. Uh, there, Nintendo is opening up a ballot. Where you can write in Smash characters that you want to see. Oh, good. Any char- Do you want to see? Any- is there any characters you want to see in Smash Brothers that aren't in there? Waluigi. Waluigi, you're 100 percent right. Why? Why isn't a Waluigi in there? You've come a long man. way on Waluigi. Listen, I don't. I don't like Waluigi, but I still recognize that. Why the fuck isn't he in Smash Brothers? Like, you're just, right. That it's shit kind of a. It's kind of a sense. slight at this point. Yeah, it's like they have a vendetta against Waluigi, the worst Mario character. Um, I think. I don't know if they're saying, like, and only Nintendo character. Like, they might just be saying kind of whatever. Smash Brothers, ballot. Yeah, you know, I I really feel like for this, you'd have to be picking some really obscure, like, almost bad Nintendo characters that have no right being in a Smash Brothers game. Like, I don't know, Pit. Right, yeah. Or two Pits. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, wondering how you were going to say that, and you picked the best way to say it. Thank like, you. I can't fucking believe there's two pits. Like, what could be... Uh, what's more uninteresting than pit? Two pits. A second pit with darker clothes. Ugh. God Fuck damn off. it. Um, I, maybe they could find a way to jam some more uh, fucking uh, 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 Fire, Emblem, Fire characters. Emblem characters in there. Yeah, there really should be more Fire Emblem yeah. characters. 
uh, well, they're doing the they're they're doing the Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem Cross uh, uh, Persona or something, right? Is that a thing? Yeah, that, that sounds pretty cool. Of? Yeah, yeah. Maybe they get some Persona characters in there. Oh, I don't know. Shit. Yeah, like every pers- er- literally every single Persona. Um, you just I just get every Persona yeah. character. Yeah, I wanna I wanna play as Black Frost. <laughs> and who doesn't? <laughs> Oh man, uh, that actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> it does sound pretty cool. But at least so there we go. We got Kyle's. We got Kyle's edition is, is Black Frost. Uh, um, you know, um, how about you know? Got to get Mallow in there. Obviously, Mallow and Gino. They just they haven't gotten Mallow and Gino. Listen, Mallow. You know what? People. No one's ever said this before. Mallow and Gino are the uh, the chaotix of the Nintendo universe. You're right. Literally, no one said this. Oh, I actually have a real suggestion. Okay, what's up? I Black fucking, Frost isn't a real suggestion. I fucking love Plum. Who's Plum? Plum, Keith. Who's Plum? Plum is a Mario princess that only appeared in Mario Golf for the N64. Oh, I think I know Plum. And she was my fucking jam. She's got Plum jam. She's got brown hair. She's got pigtails. She wore she wore a navy polo. Plum. Princess Plum. I'm getting a I'm getting a Google image search to jog my memory. I mean technically princess? I don't I don't know if she was a princess, but she was a woman with a fruit name in a Mario game, so Oh yeah, I know I know Plum. Yeah. Yeah. Like it blows my Plum mind looks that like Plum's the girl from like, Kirby. Plum ain't in any other games. I think she's like a trophy in the Smash Brothers games. What the fuck, man? Give me some yeah, plum. What the fuck? Get some plum. Like I'm, su- I'm spin- only suggesting Plum for Smash Brothers because they're asking. If they were asking about right. every game, I suggest Plum for every game. You like Plum that much? I love Plum. Um, I've always wanted to see Pikachu in a Smash Brothers game. <laughs> 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 um, uh, what else we got? We got oh, so let's do some more fucking Nintendo Direct. Don fan. Uh, what's that? Don fan. Don fan? Oh yeah, let's see some Don. I really, really love Pokemon the fir- the short that came before Pokemon the first movie. Yeah, so I'm a huge Don fan. You fan. fucking know about Don fan? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like a fucking you weird. It's like a weird uh, uh, tusked elephant cat. No, it's like a. Well, he's the size of a cat, but he was no, like. He's not the size thing. of a cat. Don fan is swole. Well, he's the size of, like, a fucking big cat. No. He, <laughs> like, a cat that you're like, wow, that's a house cat? That thing's huge. No, it's, like, the size of a lion. No, he's, like, the size of a pig. It's so, no, it's definitely, it's bigger than a pig, smaller than a lion. It's, like, a perfect right, middle see. ground. Don Fan was Don pretty Fan. big. Height. I just spelled height wrong. It's fine. Uh, we're looking it up. Don Fan is three feet seven inches. That's pretty high. tall. That's pretty tall. For, that's pretty for tall. a four-legged animal, three feet is pretty. You're big. You're right. That's pretty big. That's bigger than I thought. But I will say this: the anime and the Pokedex data it is like basically you cannot look at one and tell the other, because uh, like in the sh- in the according to the Pokedex, like a Charizard is basically is like four ten. What? Uh, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. And then you look at the that's, anime, and it's like clearly like eight feet tall. Yeah, that's some hot garbage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shit like and that. It's hot is garbage because Charizard set it on fire. He was <clears> so yeah, pissed yeah. about that. It was that. regular garbage. Yeah, it was trash, and he set it on fire. And now it's hot garbage. I can uh, I can fucking mo- tell you what Pokemon we don't need in Smash Brothers. That's uh, a <laughs> Snubble. I, you know what? what Snubble's really grown on me. No, fuck you. I don't think Snubble would be a good Smash character, but I used to hate Snubble, and now I'm like, no, you know what? Snubble is hilarious. Fuck Snubble. Uh, and Grand Bull is kind of a badass. Hmm. Uh, Yarn Amiibo. Kyle, I was never. I'm. I don't look at. I, I don't look at toys and go like, oh, I want that toy. Yeah. No. Get. I'm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not seven, so I don't do that either. I'm not well. I feel like I feel like we live in an age where a lot of people our age and older and younger look at toys and go, "I want those toys." Uh, and amiibos are fucking huge, uh, both in, uh, at, both in America and just among my friend group. People love amiibos. It's so insulting to my my being. Because look, look, look. Yeah, I like Nintendo characters. 
you know what? I don't necessarily what? want a, a figurine of a Nintendo character, but I see the appeal. I see them in the boxes in the stores. They look nice. Keith. They do look nice. They 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 look nice. I like no Nintendo. They look nice. I'm not a Frozen Heart boy. I'm not a Frozen Heart boy, Keith. Are you Kyle? How's your heart? Is it a frozen? It 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 beats with life, Keith. Okay, and well, as long as it beats with life. And what I'm saying here is that like, what do these things cost? Like twelve bucks? Um, I actually don't know the price of it. It's like a lot of money. It's like twelve bucks. And like, I'm gonna look up a price. The price of an amiibo. I just searched Mario amiibo. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking at a figure. Uh, ten dollars. Here's some shit. This peach right? one is thirteen dollars. Here is my deal with yeah. the amiibos: is that if yeah. they really did something, like if it was like a really cool bonus thing, or even if it was just some dumb fucking game that I logically knew that like all of the content of the game was in the sixty dollar disc that I bought, and that they're just making me buy the figurines to unlock content for no reason, like in Skylanders, mm-hmm. I still might even be be roped into it. But yeah. they don't well, do Kyle, jack we've never, shit, Keith. We've never been toy people, you and I. We've always been, like, very specifically not toys, instead video games. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of people that grew up getting, like, toys like that in a way that we didn't. Not that Not that we couldn't have, or specifically I couldn't have. The last uh, time I was way into action figures was when I had a bunch of Dragon Ball Z action figures. Yeah, like I, I, I never even had Dragon Ball Z action figures. Like the the last toy that I had was like a was like a Force FX lightsaber when I was yeah. nine that Casey broke. You know what? I think uh, like one of the very last action figures I ever bought because this was even past the point where I was really into like my Dragon Ball Z action figures was I yeah. got a uh, Super Saiyan three Goku figure. Mm-hmm. Keith, what do you think the problem was with that figure? Um, too much hair? Like, yeah, like at least 50 to 60% of the figure's weight was in the hair. So it was like <laughs> impossible to stand up. You would just stand it what up if the and hair, fall What if the over? hair functioned as a third leg and it even had like a little platform at the oh, bottom to create a solid dude, surface? Dude, that's how you do it. See, they should have yeah. you making the, the action figures. That's what I've been saying for years is like someone get me in there to design Dragon Ball Z character toys. Um, yeah, so, so oh, here's the thing that I forgot about the Amiibos. It's, like, super competitive pricing because Nintendo doesn't make enough of them. Yeah. And so Amiibos have wildly ranged pricing. Like, you, like they're, like, $10 or $15 or some of them are $30. Like, people just spend tons of money on Amiibos because you, it, they, they, Nintendo has a weird artificial scarcity on them. Um, but here's the thing. They introduced uh, Yarn Amiibos, and they're fucking adorable, and I want one, and I gave you a picture in Skype. You should click on it. Oh, they're okay. fucking the best. See, someone said something about... I was complaining about Amiibos on uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter. I was complaining about Amiibos on Twitter, and somebody was like, but that Yarn Yoshi. Oh, these are really what they look like? These are the Amiibos? Yeah. That's fucking adorable. Yeah, those are really cute. Like, that was the first time that I saw an Amiibo, and I was like, that's... I kind of want one of those cute Yarn Yoshis. And, like, wait, I'm, lo- I'm looking at it. It has no plastic platform. Like, is it completely yarn? It's on the bottom. On the bottom, there's a plastic little disc. Okay. It actually looks like soft plastic, even. Like, I saw when I was finding that picture, I saw one. On, on the underside, there is what looks like a soft plastic disc. Yeah. Um, it's, like... Because, yeah, like you said, I'm not a toy person, but even me, I see Amiibos, and I'm like, oh, I'm like 90% yeah. there. Like, I really want to mm-hmm. buy an Amiibo, but the I just can't get there unless they give me a good reason, and they just haven't. And the fact that everyone else is losing their fucking dumbass minds about it means like, oh, they never will get there because clearly they don't have to. Right, they don't have to because everybody's already in. For what, like, everyone just kind of decided that these were cool. Yeah, like, I don't get they're it. They're kind of not cool. They're like alert. Like, they're so close to cool. It's the closest to wanting like, a toy I've come in a long time. I, I feel in like, a long time. I feel like everyone has convinced themselves that they should buy it because there's ostensibly, like, an ulterior video game related motive for it. Right. But, like, yeah. they're not. They're just Nintendo toys. And they made Nintendo toys before. You fuckers didn't buy them. So why are you going right. nuts now? I don't, I don't. No, I don't know. 
I wish I knew, Kyle. I wish I knew. People were like, uh, Nintendo I, really needs I, to turn around. They need to like put out like a good system for gamers. They need to have like a new 3D Mario. Where the fuck is Zelda? Like, oh no, it's the toys. Just get the toys. It's like well, speaking of Zelda, I have two new stories here. Legend of Zelda Wii U de- delayed beyond 2015. Yeah. Uh, the second piece of news: Keith Carberry getting Wii U quote delayed beyond 2015. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't even yeah, like so Zelda I don't know that if they much. ever. S- What's that? I don't even like Zelda that much. No, but that game looks really, really good. Yeah, I mean, but you could tell from the little that they had shown from it that they were nowhere near releasing it. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, the the well, uh, oh, also part of that news story is that they're skipping E three this year for for Zelda. Like they're not doing uh, anything for the. Yeah, isn't that weird? So dumb. They don't have anything new to. They don't have anything new to show. Uh, yeah, like remember um, how they killed it like this year? That was one of my biggest regrets was that I last I didn't yeah last year that I didn't spend time any time on the game of the year podcast talking about how like Nintendo weirdly killed it that year, like in a year mm-hmm. where like the other systems were kind of like devoid of games. Yeah, like, I I think it wasn't really my top ten, but like my top twelve, like my list, and then like the two games that barely made it. There was like five or six Nintendo games. On mm-hmm. on the and out of those twelve, like it was crazy. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a ton. And like now, what are they doing? Where 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 are them games at? Um, Keith, where are them games at? I don't know. I bet a lot of the ones that were from last year are still not. Splatoon is still not out. I, I'm really interested in Splatoon. Yeah, I just saw some Splatoon. Like uh, when I was at PAX, there was like a whole Splatoon booth with like a big video screen of a mm-hmm. of a trailer playing, and I was like, oh yeah, okay. I haven't seen literally anything of Splatoon, and no one's been able to explain what it is to me. But now that I see it, it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, you hadn't seen any before? No. I don't watch Nintendo Directs. I can't be bothered. Well, it wasn't a Nintendo Direct. It was like, this, it was like the E3 Nintendo Direct, which is it's different. It's still a Nintendo Direct. That's, I guess that's fair. I didn't watch the one yesterday. I just like read up on all the interesting parts. I let, not I let in for a penny, not didn't... in for a pound also. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, let's see what else. What's what else do I got for you? Here's here's a here's a light story that I that I that I'm telling you only so that I can say this. Okay. Uh, Quantum Break Remedy's insane mystery game about nothing, of course, delayed to 2016. <laughs> uh. Uh, do you does in, do you or anyone know what Quantum Break is? Yet? Nobody knows what Quantum Break is. Well, Quantum Break was the thing that it was like it's like a TV show, it's, but also it's a, TV a game. Show. And it's a video game. It's a keychain. It's a bike to ride to work. <laughs> it's a book. Yeah, like, <laughs> well, I think I think before this was like uh, in Nintendo's like video game, TV, multimedia, all in one media future wet dream for xbox one like before re- yeah. reality came crashing down around them i think mm-hmm. like this was that game that like perfectly filled that slot of like it's like tv but also a game and it's all on your xbox and bleh, i just i just splooched on your face yeah uh, I, l- l- and, listen, and now that if that's good <laughs> then then you know cool but what is it and what is it but what is you it you could tell that it wasn't gonna be good or cool though um, like because it's it a tv like- show or something what it looks like, if I had to guess, it looks like fucking heavy rain uh-huh. that is that is more actiony, and also there's a TV show part. That's what it looks like. Okay. Um, Good. Great. Yeah. Um. Boy, too bad that's delayed, huh? Uh, really I think what there's it says like, for every game that gets delayed. Like no, no matter how obvious it is, there's always one person that's like super fucking bummed. There's already like one person that reserved like the number one slot on their game of the year list for Quantum Break, and they're like, "No, oh, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> now I gotta play one more game? What? What? Um. By the way, I do. I just want to say that the the press release for this delay. Um, makes it sound like the reason that they delayed was because so many good games were coming out this year already <laughs> that they wanted to move it to 2016. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with so many games launching this year, moving to Quantum Break to 2016 extends our incredible portfolio Ugh. into next year with a monster new IP. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. We, what a fucking lineup bullshit. <laughs> um, I mean... Microsoft at least has more than Sony. Let's give them that much credit. 
That's yeah. I uh, I uh, I will be quick to give them that credit. I'll be quick to give them the credit that there's more shit so, coming out for 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 my Xbox than for your PlayStation. Yeah. But I will take away a demerit uh, for Microsoft not having fucking a functional party chat or Skype chat uh, during Twitch streaming. Here's the thing, Keith. Uh, yeah. With Uncharted delayed until next year, um, and Bloodborne already released, Sony has like nothing. Really. Like there's like no games. What this? Okay, so in this, I can. I'm just looking at it right now, so I can read it to you. Part of the lineup for this year on Xbox, um, which the people delaying Quantum Break is quick to tell you. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Halo Five. Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Fable Legends, mm. and Forza Motorsport Six. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm so sure. I want to play that. Although that Tomb Raider thing sounds like it's multi-platform. Yeah, it'll be like on every other platform next holiday or whatever. But oh, okay. Is it is it starting off as an Xbox One exclusive? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that one's completely confirmed. That, that oh, was I, didn't, I, did, I just had not heard of it. They they announced that game was announced as an Xbox One exclusive, and people lost their fucking shit, and everyone was like, "Is it is it a timed exclusive? Is it a true exclusive? What's going on?" Because this was like in the heat of like yeah, no one's the ever last. the heat of no one's ever going to buy an Xbox One. And yeah, uh, there was yeah, this great, yeah. there was this great line from somebody at Microsoft. I wish I could remember who, like on Twitter or something, who just fucking like just gave up and lost it. And he said something like, "Of course we haven't paid for the rights to the Tomb Raider franchise till the end of time. I can't release any other details." You're like, okay, so <laughs> confirmed, timed, exclusive. Then, oh, oh, that guy had a right to be grumpy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, um. Kyle, we got a new Fatal Frame coming to Wii U. Yeah, we do. Are we going to play that? Eh. Yeah. I mean, Fatal Frame 2, I feel like, didn't... Whatever. That was a different time. I, I think... That was a different time. It was a new Fatal Frame game. I think the problem with Fatal Frame 2, which was the only one that we played, was that, like, in classic... Fatal Frame 2, can you be more specific? <laughs> Fatal... Oh, I'm sorry. Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly. Dang. Oh, totally that's Totally serviceable one, right. tag, uh, subtitle for game. Sure, why not? Whoever said otherwise. I don't know. Some lunatic, probably. <laughs> yeah, a, a man would have to be truly disturbed to think that there's anything wrong with the title Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly. Uh, but I, I think we felt like it had a really good idea that wasn't incredibly gamey, and it was like they shoehorned a game into it where it's like there was points and you had special film that did extra yeah, damage made, and shit. They made, a, they made it... It could have been a game that was like... Uh, not gamey beyond its years, yeah. And instead, it was hacka gamey. Yeah. It, I, I think, I think the the concept of Fatal Frame was a little ahead of its time, and I think maybe now mm-hmm. is a much better time for the re the the Fatal Frame game that I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe you know as it shapes up, maybe it'll look cool, and maybe it's something we'll look into. Who knows? Remember the? It was like you found like a demon camera from like a mad scientist or something like. Yeah, Dude, just yeah, make he, it a regular it. camera, and why are there ghosts in it? I don't know. It's spo- that's the whole point. Not knowing, <laughs> not knowing why weird things are happening is the point of horror. Yep. Um. All right. Uh. What else we got, Kyle? What else we got? A new. F- they're they're gonna announce another Guitar Hero. They I, they uh, already is... did announce another rock band. Yeah. So are we getting back into it? Are we doing rhythm games again? <sighs> it's too soon, man. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't know of any... Yeah, like, I'm not ready. I would say... I'm sure if I already owned it, if I bought it, I would be ready and have fun with it, but I don't want to buy a rhythm game. And I didn't even buy Rock Band 3 or Beatles no. Rock Band or any of the any of the Guitar Heroes past Guitar Hero I, 3. Like I, I, bought rock ba- I bought Beatles Rock Band when it was new and traded mm-hmm. it in after like two weeks because I was like, oh, okay, I got the only fun to be had in this. Uh, and then mm-hmm. I bought it again like four years later when it was like two dollars used at GameStop. Yeah. Like that shit mm-hmm. crashed really hard. But I feel like if you waited another five years, which I get that five years is a pretty long time, but if you waited five years, I feel like I would be like chomp I would be chomping at that bit, Keith, for a new rock band game. But right now I'm still no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I understand I understand why um Harmonix is doing a new rock band cuz that's what they it's, have. Yeah. I mean, that's all they got really. New Guitar Hero I think is solely out there to be a competitor to the rock band announcement. Yep. 
I which is I mean shitty. I think at this point Harmonix is really like it's a studio filled with people that love rock band because they went I really love rock band I'm gonna go work for the people that make it so it's like yeah of course they're the people um like they they've been dying to make rock band four since rock band three probably mm-hmm. like you know like they've they've just been waiting for someone to let them which is kind of disappointing because I'm interested in other things that they can do yeah well they had other things and they shelved them yeah. Like what? What did they do with that uh, that first person shooter? Is that still available to play? I know it was like an it's, alpha. It's backburnered. Yeah. It. You know. I mean, I wasn't thrilled by it. I must say. But did you play? Yeah, it? I did. I didn't play it during the alpha. I played it before. Yeah, that. Yeah, you did. You were in a super secret test focus group or something. Who knows if I could talk about that? I don't know. Just, it's uh, fine. Probably. It's, fine. it's probably fine. Yeah, I liked it when I played it then. Yeah. Um. It was it was uh, very hard to get into. I, I feel like the you, you can't just get the problem with that I game is that you you couldn't just get someone into it by being a first person shooter fan. You couldn't get someone into it just by being a fan of like a rock band. Like it appeals, I feel like, to a very specific set. You know, I bet you could. I bet that you could sell that to anybody who likes first person shooters. I don't think so. It no was. Way. It had a. It had a very steep learning curve, which is the weird thing about a shooter. Like shooters generally have the smallest learning curves. It's all of them are the same. Yeah. Like you just point your gun and shoot at the thing. But this one had all sorts of rules of when you could shoot, when you couldn't shoot. You had to follow a beat, and you had to be good at following the beat. Um, I, I think. Th- I think the thing with shooters is that I think most of the people that are first person shooter fans are really into the specific kind of first person shooter experience that is on offer at like 99% of other FPS games and like yeah. really the people who are first person shooter fans are going to that are going to be into it are people that have like a wide range of video game tastes and are like open minded and interested in playing like all game experiences like you and I mm-hmm. and like you know I feel like there's a large portion of the people that are playing any other shooter game that like are not are just not even going to pay attention to that game. Uh, yes, I agree. Um, I what I what I think about I try to figure out like when was the time that I most liked Guitar Hero and is it even possible to go back to that? I don't know that it is, but I think what was really great was in Guitar Hero One. It was like, it wasn't just about, hey, it's like listening to music, but you're doing something. Like, just pick all your favorite bands. Pay pay a few dollars to get your favorite songs. It was like, this game has like 25 songs. And they're not even yeah. like the 25 biggest hit songs. You know, it's like, it's from a lot of famous artists, but it's like their sixth most famous song. But like, it's still a really good song. Like, it felt like... They couldn't quite get the most obvious things, but it kind of worked out in its favor because it was like a lot of side stuff. It felt like a really well curated list of songs that it was like none of it was what you expected, but you were thrilled by all of it. And it was like a great experience in that way. I felt very similarly about Guitar Hero 2. Yeah. Which uh, was probably my height of enjoying uh, those games. Sure. Um, Now, Now it just feels like it's been... Like, expanded and expanded and expanded until, like, the only way to enjoy it is just to, like, play... Have a billion yeah, songs. Yeah, have a billion songs and play every... And who cares? Yeah. And I'm, like, totally un- unenthused by that prospect of just playing the songs. Uh, ironically, playing the songs that I thought I wanted to play was exactly what killed my interest in those games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that. Rock Band 4, I, I could not possibly care less, I don't think. Uh yeah sure, it's sad. I hope I hope it uh, I hope that the thing that they do isn't like we f- we figured out a new plastic thing for you to get. No, there's no way they're they they'll do there's that. There's no way that's it. But like that's kind of I I feel like that's that's a first impulse. It's like maybe keyboard. Like no, just no, like don't. Dude, they did that in Rock Band Three. Did yeah. they? I was just about Ooh. to say, like, my biggest regret was that I always heard that that was a lot of fun, and, like, I never got to play it, and I don't even know where you would get a Rockman 3 keyboard. Like, do they still exist? Was there some kind of firing squad? I don't remember. I'm sure that you can get one on eBay for, like, $12. I don't know. I mean, it might be one of those things where so few of them were ever bought that they're kind of like a collector's item now. 
uh, Rock Band keyboard, 1999. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, uh, factory sealed ones for fifty five dollars. Yeah, this one's thirty three dollars. That one's a Mad Cat's one. That's twenty dollars. Thirty. Yeah, but you know that Mad Mad Cat's have stepped up their game a little bit. Yeah, but I still want the original. I want that original shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This one's a, this one comes with the, the guitar and the keyboard for fifty bucks. So they're like fifty bucks. That's still a lot, though. Yeah. Welcome back to eBay the podcast. Yeah, I love that eBay. eBay. Um, recently, did you have anything? Recent- I have two. I have two very quick things that are that are not okay. Nice. I think we could probably wrap it up pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the just to real quick get them over with because they're on my list. Uh. Uh, Survivarium, an MMO, uh, an MMO shooter made by the Stalker people huh. or by Stalker alumni, is coming out tomorrow. Whoa! Okay, um, that was. I thought it. I thought you were going to oh be yeah, like, "This tomorrow. is the thing that just got announced. Look forward to it as it develops over the next four years." Yeah, no, it's coming out tomorrow. Oh, okay. Is which is weird. Um, and I'm kind of interested in checking that out, probably sure. because I really like. Uh, I really like Stalker Call of Pripyat. I really like. Which I played a ton of. I really like the idea of the Stalker games. Have you played any of them? Uh, I played as much as I could. I re. I th- if you play, if you didn't play Call of Pripyat, it's really, e- it's easier to play than the other ones. Definitely. I. It's probably the closest thing to a survival horror game that I've played and enjoyed. I definitely have it. I don't know how much I played of it. I think I tried. I think I tried and like lost interest yeah. slash couldn't figure out what to do or where to go within like fifteen it's minutes. Tough. It's it's that's like the hardest part is figuring out where yeah, to go. Yeah, I, I think do. that's definitely what happened. I got into the game, had no idea what was going on, and just stopped. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a. Uh, I saw a. Uh, I saw something on Polygon talking about like uh, how Star Citizen is like the like. I think it was titled like Star like Star Citizen's key to crowdfunding. Never stop crowdfunding. Yeah. And so I just wrote down Star Citizen is a clusterfuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's crazy. They I I heard on Giant Bomb they've made something like eighty million dollars in crowdfunding or something. It's I think it's at seventy eight million dollars. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So here's the thing about here's the thing about Star Citizen. Like no, I feel like I feel like everyone's kind of tiptoeing around this and no one's really saying anything. Star Citizen. Looks like it's fucking garbage. It looks like a mess. It looks like a living nightmare to <laughs> be a part of and be entrenched in. If you gave a lot of money to Star Citizen, I apologize. Like something is something is not clicking there at all. Um, during the uh, uh, there was like a free trial week during South by Southwest. Oh, really? And I tried to play. Well, how it. much yeah. of it is even a game? Uh, this was the this free trial thing was just like a dogfight mode where you could fly a ship okay. and shoot at other ships. Um, so ostensibly a very very small portion of the game. Um, and so I downloaded it, and the first thing that happened was it kept on rejecting my username and, and password, even though they were right. And then it crashed like six times, and then the massive install thing uh, was going at like. Something like eighty kilobytes a second, and said that it would be done in like twelve months. Oh boy! Um, yeah, and just wouldn't speed up. I left it going all night to see if it maybe w- would speed up. Uh, I checked the uh, forums for any help on that, and they were like, "Yeah, just every, just sometimes some people for whatever reason get really really slow downloads and can't download the game, and uh, no one's looking into it or will help us." <laughs> um, I and. Uh, the- Sorry. And then to do my due diligence to, uh, to like figure out what the game was, I read up a bunch of stuff and watched some videos of people who actually got to get going and playing it and uh looks really boring. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I don't know a lot about it. I would say my my most salient memory of it was when it first happened. It was like Kickstarter. It was like I think the Double Fine Kickstarter had just hit it big and it, everyone was talking about this new thing Kickstarter. And someone had Star Citizen, and it was like, it just seemed like from the beginning, it was like fully formed in as an idea. Like they were they yeah. were selling like f- selling like as in like levels of of support that you could give in re- in exchange for things. It was like it it was like an insane amount of detail for like a thing that couldn't exist yet. And it seemed right. like I've never heard of a game where. 
everything was fully formed as an idea supposedly from the beginning and like the game turned out well like mm-hmm. it actually reminds me of like this hilarious joke of a kickstarter that someone did where like they knew nothing about game development they just decided they wanted to make an mmo and they had some money so they were like my kickstarter goal is a million dollars and i will i will front the other million dollars to make this mmo like oh that's hilarious you think it takes only two million dollars to make an mmo and like all the backer rewards were things like get a mount that will help you increase movement speed this much or like get this item that normally you'd have to be level 15 to get and it's like you you don't even know what your game is yet how could i how could you know what items will help me Oh no, that's like I'm I feel like really upset listening to that. <laughs> like I'm sad for that guy, I'm sad for what MMOs are, like there's a lot of levels of <laughs> uh, I mean, um, there are a lot of people that have sunk a lot of money into Star Citizen and it seems oh, yeah. it seems to be plotting ever onward and yeah, there are there are people that have given uh, I think I think I don't think it is I don't think that this is a tale out of school to say there are people who have given tens of thousands of dollars. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think to that. I game. think you're right. Um, here and here's the the most insane thing about that. As much as it was a like a weirdly almost eerily complete vision from the start. Yeah. Like imagine they've gotten so much more funding than they were looking for, and they keep on adding stuff to right. it. That was never even part of that initial, like, yeah, we'll just, like, have a, you can go to the, a mall in the thing, and you can go to, like, a space camp, and you're in Star Citizen, and you, like, can do your space taxes. Like, they keep on throwing shit in there. Like, what is that game? Please stay away from Star Citizen. I, I don't know. I don't think it's a scam, but I do think it's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny to me how, like, some games, like, they they will just bend over backwards to get even the smallest amount of support and people just hate things for no reason and refuse to care or pay attention and like star citizen was like people were like whipping their dicks out and like tripping over themselves to like just give as much money as possible to star citizen sight unseen sight unseen and like goal so far surpassed Oh, it was weird. That always makes me. I always feel bad for other things that are not getting attention when it's like, like, yeah, I'm asking for for uh, for five hundred thousand dollars to make this game, and it's like, like, okay, well, here's seven million dollars. We decided that you need seven million dollars for this, um, which is great because a lot of people don't put the full amount that they need as the Kickstarter. They're like, ah, oh, we'll find funding yeah. another way. Like once we get this, maybe we can get someone who will fund the rest, like an angel investor right, or whatever. Right. But like. There's a certain point where – there's a certain point like why are you giving – like on Kickstarter specifically, like these people are making a back scratcher and they're asking for $36,000. How come you funded them $4 million? <laughs> or like, They don't need $4 million. They need $36,000. Oh, Keith, do you think this is the problem? Do you think people are putting in thousands of dollars in a Star Citizen because they're th- they think they're going to get a real spaceship? Like that's the only explanation, right? <laughs> no, I think they think they're going to get a really nice back scratcher. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that is going to have to do it for this, the latest, hottest, newest edition of the Run Button Podcast. Keith, I'm so glad that uh, you could be here as my guest. Thank you for throwing me the outro because I'm the host, Kyle Churchill. It was great to have you on this, the newest, freshest, coolest, slickest uh, episode of the Run Button Podcast. Uh, We'll be back soon with another episode of this podcast that I host now. Keith. Thank you um, yep. for saying that, and I just want to remind everybody, especially you, Keith, since uh, that, I'm the host, but of course you are just, as, you're just a guest, so I would really love if you would go support me, whoa, go support me and what I'm doing on patreon.com slash run button, or uh, just or check out some of my videos biz. on youtube.com you slash run button. You can check out my Patreon at contentburger.biz. Oh, what's that about? Uh, it's, uh, have you been to, do you know run button? Uh, yeah, the Run Button, the the show that I host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it's Run, Run Button, the show that I host, is where you, that's where Content Burger Up is. Well, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so glad that you set yeah. that up for me. That's really helpful. Um, well, anything, was there anything else? Anything else nope, real quick? see ya. Okay. Bye. Bye.